reboot. Straight reboot going. Alright, and yeah, we're gonna do a tutorial for Metal Warriors. Not necessarily the whole thing. Um, in fact, probably just through stage six, but hey, that's something. Um, gonna take through the basics. The first six stages, which is what the, uh, the, the Super 16 competition demands, not too tough, but there's a lot to understand about just the game system overall. And once you've got all that, I think it winds up being pretty simple, especially for the, some of these early stages. But um, yeah, we'll just clear out the, uh, the general process. I don't remember the exact rules for the competition, but um, just as a starting out point, you really can benefit a little bit from just going in here. Um, if you want, you can change your name. Um, in a real speed run, it matters for just a, a handful of frames. Um, you can put one syllable, you can do no syllable, uh, and it'll take it. Um, you have to backspace for, to get it though. And cutscenes definitely want off, but other than that, uh, if you really want, you can go through and if you have some preferred button mappings that you prefer better, go for it. Set it all up and just head right in. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna be making some new save states as we go through this just to keep track of everything. Um, stage one and everything else I'm gonna get to after introducing kind of just the general controls. So important thing to note here, while it's black like this, there is a period of time in which you gain control. So even before you can see yourself, you can already hold forward, you can tap, 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 and like I'm already all the way over here versus just if I had let it run through uh, this way, you fall straight for whoever long and you wind up here. So you can gain control that much earlier and I strongly encourage you to do so. Hey, I'll knock. Oh, glad to hear it. Hey, dilettante. Good to see you, too. Um, pop those save states. So again, you can hold forward and just kind of tap uh, your vernier. So just uh, whatever, like just so long as you're tapping, you'll still get enough speed to do kind of whatever you want. But um, that this is just the illustration that shows, yeah, you can move even while it's uh, going through that way. I'm going to turn off the hitboxes for the time being. Um, but yeah, you've got your mech. And as you notice, there's no other HUD going on here because all of the information you need to know is the color of your mech, and that determines your HP. Uh, there are seven damage phases, uh, and what that means is that each damage phase you have 64 hit points before it moves down to another color. Uh, and just uh, to show off a little bit of how all that works, so we're gonna pop on our handy dandy script here. In the upper left, you can see um, this, I'm in damage phase seven. I've got 61 hit points currently. Um, however, if I get hit a little bit, okay, I'm, I'm down to 49, whatever, I can go wander over here. Get out of here, dude. Okay, so I'm at 40 health. If I leave the mech, get back in, I'm at 64 again. So you can use that if you think that you're like running low on damage. Um, you took some extra hits somewhere and you want to get just the best use out of your phase. Just eject, jump back in, it'll restore the health of that phase. However, if, uh, if it were to go all the way down uh, to a new damage phase, let's say I'm going to go to six or five. Pew pew pew. Pew pew pew. Oh, rockets. Just what I needed. Come on, guy. You can do it. There, now I'm in damage phase six. So I got a little darker, uh, a little less vibrant on the uh, the purple here. This guy is really not good at hurting me. All right, now I'm down in uh, damage phase five. So. We got damage phase five. I'm definitely looking a little worse for wear. And if I leave, so I've got 22 hit points left in this current phase. If I leave, go back in, 
it refreshes, but I'm still damage phase five. So you still got to be careful about that and use it to um, reset and get to where you need to. Uh, some other things to note, just general movement. Um, of course, you can press up, down to aim your weapon, and you're going to want to get very used to that uh, just overall. Um, there's only specific angles that you can go, but it kind of does pay attention to how much you do, so it can be a little bit more sensitive sometimes. Uh, however, uh, so other things you can do, uh, if you press X, you can deploy a little shield. Not terribly useful through most of the run, but you can use it some places if you feel like it. Um, R is a, another just shoulder shield. Again, don't really use it in the run. Uh, beam Saber. Uh, what you might not realize is that the beam saber, so this is the, the neutral position, if you hold forward, you do a stab. If you hold up, you do an upswing. And there are different cases where you might use them, basically just the hitbox is a little different between all of them, so uh, like normally, it's a swing down and it covers in front of you for a little bit. Stab is, it keeps the hitbox out quite some range and hangs out for a while and it will do constant damage. And the upswing, um, again, not too useful because um, it's a very narrow time that it's actually doing damage in front of you, and that's usually where there's something you want to kill. So, yeah. Let's uh, do some... Oh, okay, so that's not there anymore. Let's talk a little bit about the boxes. So, these crates, sometimes uh, you can find fixed crates, other times they will be random, and the random ones, uh, in the run there's only three, two, maybe three, that really matter, the run being up to stage six, um, uh, that are random that you want to get pr usually rockets out of. Um, if you don't get rockets, not the end of the world, it's like a five, ten second difference most of the time. But uh, this first one right here is random. And I just want to talk a little bit about what they are. So this number two is one of the better things you can get, uh, it, just in terms of uh, overall utility. It's shot two. And all of the shot upgrades, whether they come from uh, these boxes or, or anywhere else around the stage, they are based on ammo. So you want to kind of conserve them for when you actually need them the most. So they don't, even if I got it right then, it has 256 shots I can fire and it will not go away until I've used all 256 shots or if I get out and get back in, it will uh, completely turn it off and you can see the bullets are smaller now. Uh, there's also one uh, in that. One is, it's basically the same as your normal shot. I don't think it's any more powerful. Uh, and then there's also uh, bounce and seek. And you do not want Bounce or Seek because they do less damage, they are harder to hit things with, and just, if you can, avoid them. Um, they'll show up randomly in some cases, but they're usually never like in your way, you have to pick them up or wait. Um, but that's just how the shots weapons work, so um, anything that's related to the bullets that you're firing out of your main weapon, uh, that's uh, they operate on that ammo system. Uh, the other side of things... is... Oh, that gave me number two again. I'm trying to... Normally I just run through that and get me some rockets. So that's health. I mean, it's health. <laughs> Not much to say there. Uh, health will restore all of your damage phases, so quite good to keep them around. And here we have rockets. Rockets are what you want to see whenever you can. Um, you have a 20 to 25 percent chance i forget the exact amount but uh rockets and any other shoulder weapon that you can get there's also inverter there's a hyperspeed there's a uh, grenadier um, all of them operate on time so as soon as you activate them they'll be available for some 20 seconds or so uh, that means when you get rockets yeah don't don't just go spamming the sucker you want to keep it until uh, you're at exactly where you want it um, and for the, uh, you also need to use them in order to pick up something else. So if, let's say you pick up a gravity, uh, change first, and later on you encounter rockets from a different chest and you're like, oh yes, I want that. You need to use the gravity, get it activated before you can pick up the rockets, in which case it will reset. And then you, you can use your rockets whenever you feel like. Um, I 
think that covers most of those pieces. There's some other general movement tech, so uh, you're going to be doing Vernier a lot, so get used to try and, trying to just maintain uh, position in the air, like know how long you need to hold it to kind of maintain the height that you want. Uh, some other things to note with it though, um, you can go in for a hard landing. So if you're up some distance, like right here, you see where I slam down, there's the thunk. Uh, that will stop, stop you down and you won't be able to jump again for a moment. So like it locks you in place. Um, instead, you can use Vernier right at the bottom and you'll immediately just go into a walk. And in general, you do want to be using Vernier wherever possible because it is faster than walking. Um, but just know that right before you land, you can engage the Vernier and release it. And you, you should basically get a pillow landing and you'll just immediately be able to act, do whatever you want. Whereas otherwise, if you get that thunk, you're stuck and you need to wait for the animation to finish out. Uh, on the other side too, there's some cases where you want to land. Uh, let's see right here. So if you, you're in the air and you hold Vernier um, after a fall, like you have to wait for gravity to kind of turn you around and you have a slow ascent after that. Instead, if you land and you jump, you immediately get that upward momentum. So you don't have to wait for the pendulum to swing in your, your favor. So you pillow landing, jump again, you get a much quicker turnaround. So there you go. I think that uh, that about covers everything with just basic controls and stuff you want to do. So uh, let's let's talk about stage one, um, and you're going to be doing this one quite a bit. So not not too bad, and probably the one that you'll have memorized the most. Um, this first part, you're gated by these glass doors that need to open up. Um, the only thing that I would say is like you don't have to make your your run through that first set perfect just because you are waiting for the blast doors when you get to this position wait right about where I am because what's going to happen you're going to see a guy run from the right side and I can just skip right over him now and you go through and just kind of fill out the rest of the stage do a pillow landing and jump back up all right so uh, at the height of that one, I should make some better save states as I'm going through. Oh, uh, that's bounce. It's not the best, but you, just, you can still just work through it. So, yep, I'm gonna rush forward when this opens up. And go through and it's gonna take me a little longer to kill this guy because I have bounce, array bounce. Pillow landing and rise up, okay. And right here, uh, instead of just kind of gunning right for the area that's going to open up in a moment, go up to the top, lead that guy, and then he'll be out of your way. You don't have to kill him. You just kind of wait for that, uh, that block to fire out, and you can continue on your merry way. There are mines here. Do not mess with the mines. They are serious business. Uh, they, will, they will F you up pretty good. Um, something you can do with this one is that... Uh, this guy right here, if he gets the angle right, he can throw those bombs straight onto this uh, cannon truck and help you take it out just fine. So, yep. again, raise him out of the way, go on through, here we go. Generally don't fire there, just to keep it easy. Let this cannon open it for you, and here we go. Kind of hang out underneath, there it is. And this is a, a core tunnel where, yeah, it's just going to feel slow unless you have rockets. And I will show the, the rocket's path. But in the meantime, you grab that rocket and then it's just home free. So you go through. Again, I've got bounce, so it is actually slower. Uh, you want to get a pillow landing there. And then you're just firing rockets to clear the, oop, clear the way and get yourself to victory. Um, we're going to start over until I get rockets, so we can show the other way of going through. Nope. RNG in this game is caused by things you can control, but it is way too sensitive to realistically control. So don't, uh, don't get yourself thinking you can set up some fancy RNG strats to guarantee a rocket. 
Uh, if it were possible, I would have done it by now. Here's gravity, just to give a demonstration of what gravity does. If you activate it, shoulder button, it will flip you. Activate again, and you, you swap back down. There are some cases where this would be useful, but not in the Super 16 run. Um, and overall, probably just don't bother to get it, because you'll probably screw yourself up more than uh, it'll help. Okay, here's gren grenades. Again, just fires grenades. They do kind of some reasonable damage, but uh, you don't... There's no reason to go for grenades. At the very least, they don't hurt you actively like a bounce or um, something else would. Um, I'm gonna try to dial this in a little bit better. So every time you press the B button, um, the RNG advances for as long, for as many frames as you're holding it. Which is to say, it could be a lot of different outcomes from doing mostly similar looking things. This is Speed Booster, and it's fun, but it makes you very difficult to control, and for the most part, since you're gated by a lot of other things, it doesn't really make you any faster to get it. Um, but, like I said, for the most part, won't hurt you too bad either. Uh, it's holding out on me here. Okay, there's one shot, and this is just what it looks like, so you know what happens if you get it sometime. There we go, rockets. Okay, so, we've got rockets. The path through is the same as it was before, up until we get to the uh, plants. Plants that the O2 canisters after all the rest of these. So go up here, bait him. There we go. Don't set off the bombs. They are just bad time. Okay. Go with that. And then from here, you can start to use the rockets to clear your way. And that should be a little bit faster. You regain the rockets there. That one is a consistent rocket pack, so it will always be rockets. Get your way through. Pillow. Pillow. And then just on your way through. And that's the rocket strat. So now we're on to mission two. Um, just gonna... Yeah, put it on this one. Um, one, two... Yeah. So mission two, more of the same. Uh, there... This first area is actually kind of tricky. Um, this is a permanent rocket, so it's always going to be a rocket. You want to grab that when you can. But the the problem is, you want to get all the way up to that upper um, missile turret. And with this guy shooting you down, it will actually knock you downward and make it really annoying to try and jump up. So uh, you want to try to manipulate him however possible to be out of the way. And that means not going fully forward. Kind of just angle back a little bit. There we go. Oh, nope, he got me. Yep, oh, got in the way. So you can use the rockets to take out these different things. Um, I will talk about the individual pieces of what's going on here in a moment. This is another permanent rocket. Take your way through these missiles. And you wait here. Oops. Uh, you don't want to get hit by bombs. Bombs are bad. But as soon as you clear that um, uh, thing, you're free. Uh, you want to just get through here. Do a little double back. That should set up soldier positions well enough. You just whoop, take it on over. Um, but let's break it down a little further. So again, you're trying to bait this guy to be low, so that he at least gets out of your way. He did not. You can get a hard landing there to be a little closer. The position, the timing that you go through and um, start your vernier during that descent is somewhat important. Um, 
angle down, keep firing while you're going. Uh, at this point, rather than firing, which will start setting off the bomb in front of me, just hang back, wait. And you can sneak in underneath and rinse and repeat. Again, swap out. As soon as you get to this little middle area, rather than just gunning it, there will probably be a guy's hitbox who blocks you. So do a little double back and then continue on and you should be just fine. Okay, a little slower. Right here. So as soon as you hit this uh, like double beam for the netting in front, that's kind of when you start to uh, trigger your vernier. And I actually did a little early there. But so long as you're just kind of firing missiles the entire time, uh, it should be reasonable. These, these mines operate on a weird principle that I'll talk a little bit more about in stage five. There we go. And so long as you can just missile that one away, or even if you just shoot through yourself, like, easy peasy. Oh, that was not great. Uh, another thing, when you are pilot, so I, I have four HP, right? Uh, I just got shot. If I get back in and then get back out again, oh, well, that's not so good. If you get back in and get back out, uh, your health will recover. So you can always do that as a, a damage saving measure. Just don't get blown up the heck by these guys. Good luck. Okay, got that. Tricked him into coming over. There we go, Vernier. Yep. You want to just try to keep that as smooth as possible. Fire rockets, fire rockets. Okay, angle down, keep firing. You want to be at the level of this upper missile without shooting at this point. Again, you don't want to set off the mines. Uh, let the rocket go out, and then just go straight up and fire another rocket, and that'll clear your path. Uh -uh! The mines have kind of a vacuum effect, unfortunately. Um, and if you run out, just shoot through. As soon as you have a, a way through, you can just head on over, and not a big deal. Ooh, that guy. Sniper. And you can die after you get there, just... Uh, <laughs> That's, that's all it takes. Um, but that stage, pretty straightforward. Um, just so long as you start to follow that path, keep your positioning consistent, don't trigger any mines, you won't run into anything too bad. Played this game endlessly as a kid. Do, you, do the mines give you a bit of a damage boost? They can, and it is useful, and we'll see some of that in stage five, hopefully. Uh, the problem is that it is very inconsistent, and you hope for the best, but there's some inner workings of the game that prevent you from being able to exploit it all the time. Um, so I'm just going to run through that one one more time. A roughly clean playthrough. Yeah, there we go. And just fire away. You start to get a feel for uh, when you want to launch out these rockets. Let it go. There you go. Simple, easy peasy. Uh, one thing you do not want to do is fire a rocket and then uh, get out of the mech because it will blow you up. And it is a bad time. So there we go. That's mission two. I'm going to put a new one right here and one two. All right. Mission three is where it starts to get interesting because we're going to start to mess up how the game is using some of its triggers. Uh, this is a whole long thing where you're supposed to get over to the power core and then defend it from being blown up um, and get back to the ship and take it over so that you can use it yourself. But uh, yeah, we don't got time for that. So we'll do some other things instead. Good luck. Again, you have control during the fade out, so you can go through. This uh, is a random box, and you want rockets again. Uh, gravity is kind of a help, but this is one of the instances where you have two 
options. So this is another random box. You can check both if you don't get uh, a rockets on the first go. But um, uh, I'm going to skip. I just assume that I don't get rockets to start out. And remember, when you're in control, don't just be holding Vernier or you'll wind up in some really weird spots. Just be quick tapping it. So, boop, 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 boop. And that'll get you some reasonable way forward. Just kind of keep close to the ground. Take that out. Okay, we got rockets, so we're going to see how this works. Um, as you're going up, you probably want to hang to the left so that this guy isn't alerted sooner. And you can just take that out. Stay right here next to the wall, fire straight down, and then just drop. And that should get you past the mines, unless they have some really weird vacuum nonsense going on. Um, but uh, at this point, you can use all of your rockets, if you have them, and just take out all of these guys. Boom. Okay. For safety, leave the mech up there. Uh, you can bring him down, but this guy will spawn and steal it from you. So once that's through, you just clear out. Something right here, right as you're crossing this threshold, if you land and then use, uh, I just use the, the melee attack. And the point being, you're immediately going to go into two consecutive dialogue boxes. And this just keeps you so that you can hold the B button, which you need to advance dialogue, and uh, still be able to like maintain your control without getting, um, without jumping and then trying to find your way back in. Uh, this point is really important because from here on, it's a race to get to a particular part if you want to do it the fastest way. So from right here, um, I'm going to put, yeah, just put a state and we're going to book it. Go exactly the back the way you came. Boop. Get through. Oop. Got caught on his foot. Fall down the pit. And then right about here, you want to start your vernier. Oh, I was a little late. But you're aiming for this this slot. Uh, let's just try that again. Yeah, thanks for the boost, buddy. Again, use the pillow landing into quick rise. As soon as you see that uh, that first corridor, hold your vernier, and you should make it just perfect. And there is a soft lock warning here. So as soon as you're heading in towards the ship. Um, you're going to get a dialogue box. If you get through that dialogue box too quickly, the game could just soft lock. So do yourself a favor, wait the one second after the dialogue box pops up and then hit the button to go forward. Uh, and it'll also help to center you a little bit because you're still kind of on the clock. Um, you And I'll explain why uh, after their quick demonstration. So you're going through right here. Okay, so as that dialog box came up, just wait at the end of it before pressing a button and continuing on, because that's the one that'll uh, that'll happen. But now we're going to learn a little bit of uh, some Mega Man tech here. So uh, right now I have my beam saber out. It does whenever it's active, it does constant damage, and then I pull up the the map pause menu. Well, it just so happens that uh, while it's here. Um, the constant damage hitboxes that are out there will continue to do their damage. So these little gun turrets, they have 256 HP and the beam saber, I believe, does three damage per frame that it's making contact. So you just need a couple seconds to be able to wipe them out completely. So I'm going to pause there. There we go. And you can see it draining away. Cool. And one more to finish it out. There we go. And that means that the ship is kept super duper close. You just take it over and drag it back in. And right now they're off destroying generators and whatever else, but uh, so long as you get to the end of it before they are able to destroy all the generators, you get the complete mission. However, if you feel like you're not going to make it because getting those pauses uh, to be exactly right is not, not the easiest, Through. There we go. Wait. Press button. 
pause away. Wait away. And I use the forward variant just because I feel like it's the most consistent. You get out of your mech right away. And uh, let's just say that we had a terrible time killing those turrets and we're not sure. Like the ship is further away, you can't even see the docking bay anymore. Uh, and what do you do? Well, you just wait for them. They're going to continue blowing up generators. Um, nothing to worry about. And as soon as you start to see everything rumble, you can go and take it over. And there you go. You've now prevented the stage from finishing and uh, failing the mission. And then you just take it back in as normal. So that's your backup. Just wait, take over the ship as soon as you start to see the rumble and the flashing. Um, one, let's let's take it from the top just uh, to cover everything. Um, I didn't show the non-rockets variant, so let's assume that we're not going to get rockets as we're going through this. Okay, look, I got uh, got gravity well. I'm gonna hang over. Look to the left, and the point is that this guy doesn't spawn right away because you do want to blow that up so he doesn't access it. Take out just the right side. And then we need to take out all of these things. So this one's first up. Just shoot it down. Before we used rockets on it. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate just a little something silly over here. Get out. You can go over there. I put the mech all the way over in the right corner because what will happen is this guy will spawn any moment. And if you shoot him, he runs away. And then he steals your bride. So, yeah, don't do not do that. Um, if you see a guy come out here, don't shoot him. Just ignore and head back over. Because uh, otherwise he's not going to do a whole lot. Or um, just park it to begin with up here. So there's no risk of it getting taken over. And you just take a little longer way to get around. Um, if you feel like you took a lot of damage from mines or anything else, the box right here is a health pack, so that does kind of start you off fresh, and you, you should be good for the rest of the stage. So let's get back over, take it out. And this cannon up here is not uh, has not been destroyed either. So use some of those, and then it's just the same as otherwise. Uh, Missiles help a lot just because you don't have to spend a whole lot of time to actually break uh, all of these individual cannon turrets. Uh, otherwise, the mission is basically the same. Oh, he shot me, which gave me downward propulsion. Okay. Wait. Press button. Oh, I missed. So this can happen. Uh, this turret's dead. You want to make sure that they're red and flashing is just the safety check. And so I haven't gotten close to being uh, uh, taking over the ship yet, so I'm going to wait now because he already gave me the message that they're blowing up the generators. There's the shaking. Take it over. And it's completely white right now, but I'm still in control. Yep. So even if you can't see, just keep holding right. Uh, and you will get through. So that's the backup. Oh. And then we get stage four. I'm just going to demonstrate um, stage three one more time um, because it is an important one. And just whether you get rockets or not depends on, uh, makes it generally easier to work with. So again, there's one more box up here you can check. Oh, bounce. Definitely don't want that. Uh, stop shooting me, guy. Okay, well, that's not good. He, that guy's there. He will mess me up. Uh, you do want to trigger those bombs because they will not be kind to you on the return trip. Jump up here. Just take out this guy slowly. Uh, I have a lot of damage taken, so I'm going to take that recharge. Go through, do not fire, just in case that guy comes out. Again, quick rise. OK. 
Okay, and then book it back. Okay. Whew. Snuck by the bomb. There we go. Wait. Go. It is a little annoying to deal with the dialogues that come up. And you can pause buffer a little bit, just uh, if you pause too early or something like that, just press it again uh, and it'll come right back up. So, so long as you can get here before the there's only two generators left, you will probably be just fine. And even if it starts exploding while you're moving the ship back, you'll still be safe. So there we go. Mission three, all done with. Um, uh, let's see, do I have this one? Yes, okay. So we're going to go to mission six. Or sorry, mission four. And mission four is incredibly complex. <laughs> uh, I don't know a better way to put that, but you do not need to be worried about it uh, for this race. There is definitely an optimal way to go through, and it is a pain in the butt. Uh, but let me first explain what's going on. And uh, this should help to, to summarize it a little bit. So you are stuck in Prometheus and you need to go through and, and do whatever you can. Um, there are waves of enemies that will be spawning periodically and they spawn, there's up to five enemies that spawn at once. And whenever you kill an enemy, that just gives room for another one to spawn and come out. The issue is that there are six spawn positions and the enemies will always spawn from the same place. But what's going on here, I'm going to try to fly around and show you. There's invisible platforms, and the enemies actually need to move along the platforms long enough to kind of pop up and, and go where they need to be. You don't need to memorize any of this. I already did all that for you and determined what should be best because Prometheus can't even fly anyways. Um, but let's just take a look uh, what's going on around the stage. Whee! So here's one platform. Enemies will spawn there. Uh, this is also just walkable. Oops, yeah, they didn't uh, do a whole lot there. That's just so the enemies don't screw up. That's platform two, three, and they go for a ways. Like, the enemies spawn all the way back here, and they need to, like, wander over. So, uh, and then there's one more equivalent right over here. And they just basically spawn in, like, this corner, and they walk off. But again, only five enemies can be available at any one time, and they do have to spawn in order. Uh, the good news is that a lot of the enemies can despawn. Um, when an enemy spawns, it always has a target. So uh, on this ship, you're trying to protect it. And they're very vague about what that actually means, but uh, really there's just a number of targets that actually matter. There's the bridge front, there's the bridge center right here, the bridge rear, this cannon, do, 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 this cannon, and then one more cannon on the far right. Uh, and then there's a tail, but you can't really prevent the tail from being destroyed. Uh, there's going to be a guy who kind of shows up and goes over there immediately, and it's really hard to try and hit him. And you don't need to worry about that, because after he does his job, he despawns anyways. So you fail the mission if every single one of those targets gets blown up, which means if you really want to, you can just hang out right here under this cannon and just kind of look back and forth um, every once in a while and take out the enemies who come for you. Don't worry about the rest of the ship. They'll blow up targets. And when the targets are blown up, if they go to them um, and they're not there, they'll either go on patrol or they'll despawn. And whether they despawn or not really depends on how close you are to them. So really just hang out here and eventually the enemies will find their way to you. Um, they'll get quicker once everything's kind of blown up. Um, there's a particular enemy that spawns to the right and goes on patrol. Um, kind of annoying, but uh, just keep that in mind. But really, if you just defend this one turret, you will never fail the mission. And you will be able to, to get through. To get through faster is another thing entirely. I have a video on YouTube that shows the optimal path for getting through this stage four. 
Honestly, like, I don't remember it enough right now to kind of demonstrate. I'm going to try anyways, just to, to give a flavor of what happens. Um, but, like, treat this as your backup strat or your strat of, like, I don't want to come up with a strategy here. Um, it will cost you 20, 30 seconds, maybe more even, but it took me weeks to be able to memorize the spawn positions, which enemies are coming from where, uh, what is the right strategy for dealing with them, um, and all the rest of that. So you can be successful just hanging out here and blowing up dudes uh, every time that they come to you. See? Mission complete. Didn't have to do anything. Um, but yeah, let's, let's treat that a little differently. Do I have one here? Yeah, stage six. So, uh, one, two. So, let's see. The way to do this, you immediately start by holding left. Boop. And you can hold B to auto-advance the dialogue. Get rid of this guy. He's always there. Grab this, head back. And at this point, you'll see that vertical column right there. That's not actually part of the bridge, but enemies do get stuck on it. And the good news is you can destroy it. So as soon as you hit that little square um, right in the middle of the ship, this this thing right here, oh, you can't see my cursor, but the, the square right in the middle of the bridge, uh, just fire up at this angle and you'll take it out. Easy peasy. And that just makes it easier for enemies to come and go and then they don't block your shots too. So keep heading over to the right. You're gonna take out this guy and then head back and you're going to have a whole bunch of new people. Start laying bombs and the point of these bombs, uh, you launch them with X, uh, is to take out some of these guys. Um, the quicker you're able to take them all out, the better. Turn back and you want to take out this guy now. Um, this is important. You want to get over to that guy who is just falling and trigger his aggro. Uh, you do that just by hitting him. Uh, you don't need to hit him with the full blast, but um, you need to hit him with uh, one of your pellets at least. And then two guys will spawn from over here. Note that I got the rockets, I am not using them yet. Uh, the optimal strategy will use rockets at different time, but I'm hanging on to them for a different purpose that kind of matters more. So don't, don't worry about them yet. There's two guys that spawn, and then you head back over, and you should be able to just barely catch... Oh, that one too. Uh, this guy coming down and again you want to take him out and his buddy and then head back and at this point you can just kind of hang out in this area defend this turret as well as the front of the ship and uh, the one last guy is going to come from over here there and then start firing immediately to the right, both your cannon and the, the missiles. The missiles is important for a very weird reason, but just trust me on it. Um, it increases your likelihood of getting a favorable bomb boost in the next stage. So to kind of play it out, and again, I, I encourage you to go find my um, Metal Warrior Stage 4 Speedrun Strat YouTube video and just study the heck out of that instead, because it's been a while and I'm doing it kind of from my vague memory. So um, treat this as the strat to kind of aim for, but not exactly what I'm showing right here. So I'll just give one more one more showcase. And again, I have all the hitboxes on just so you can kind of see what we're actually aiming at because normally, none of that. So you have to use your own visual cues and keep it moving. Take out that guy, grab rockets. Take a moment, head back, and again, when you're overlapping the square, fire. Take out this guy, and then start laying bombs. And your point is, so long as they are interested in you, they are not attacking something else. And that's kind of what you want. There should be one more dude coming, yep. And then you can head back. Take out that guy and this guy. Uh, I was late to the party, so you see this guy kind of going on his patrol. You want to take him out. Um, he's one of the ones who always hangs out over there. You can stop doing bombs too. 
um, head back and start to take out these guys. Uh, there should be like one more, yep. And now we're free to just go hang out on this side some more. You do want to try and catch these guys as they're coming down. It just makes it easier in general. Uh, if you feel like you can't aim very well, you can use rockets, but again, it's hard. They, they have to be right in front of you to be useful. So once you take out this guy, you can head back. So long as you can hit an enemy while they're descending, you basically draw their aggro, and they will no longer... Um, they'll no longer go after their target. Um, so again, mission complete. Start firing your rockets. Just straight, straight forward uh, to the right. Do not fire to the left or at any other angles. Um, and with any luck, uh, I'm just going to put... That was six, so let's put it at seven. With any luck... Gosh. We're heading into stage five. Stage five has a nice skip uh, that will save you five, six seconds if you get it, and it is only possible to get if you get a damage boost from the bombs. So you immediately start the stage, you're holding your vernier, you're holding straight forward, just hold it. And keep holding forward, and you will know if you got the setup. So don't bother shooting anything, uh, it's not really going to make a difference. And what you're looking for... Uh, okay, so I did not get it. When these bombs hit you, you should just fly forward. If you fly down at an angle, you fly up at an angle, kind of like at a slower clip forward, or you move any other direction, you don't have it. So do not go for it. Um, but then you just kind of keep moving forward. And your point is, you want to try to get through this. Again, remember your damage phases. You can skip a little bit of the, the giant um, plasma ball that's coming forward. So you can reset your damage, get back in, and then wait for one to go through. And then you just walk through when it's over. Uh, here's a note. These elevators that are moving up and down, you can go directly through them so long as you have your vernier active. So as you're falling through here, just tap it a little bit and make sure that it's active while you're encountering the, the landing area of the elevator. And you'll go straight through it. And then from there, it's just kind of moving forward. Uh, I want to try... Hmm. Can I even influence? We're going to go back to this stage briefly. Uh, because I really want to try to get at least the showcase of what happens when you get a bomb. Fire up there. One more. I guess I waited too long. Uh, using the air napalm too much uh, will possibly mess up the um, the trick trying to manipulate the bombs, so don't overdo it. Uh, it does really help, but at the same time it's not required. Uh, wait for one more guy, I believe. Yeah, you're coming. There he is. Then you head back, and the whole point of, of doing a lot of these timings is that there are guys somewhere that are destroying stuff, and they will continue to destroy stuff, but if they destroy their target and you're not around, they might just despawn. So that's the ideal case. Okay. There should be one more coming this way. Or not. Um, there's no way to know if I got this other than to just see it happen. So, <laughs> you're rushing forward, a mine hits you, and what happens? Again with that, so we are going to go back one more again. Um, 
otherwise try to just watch the speedrun videos um the record videos which will have a demonstration at least that i believe gets through um this this entire stage is just temperamental minor things change a lot and you get used to it when you're actually doing attempts all the time uh for the competition purposes it's not enough to matter um, but take out those guys, and then, hey, you got them all lined up, just take them on out. Uh, a little thing about the Prometheus is so long as you're holding the button, the projectile will not explode. So just uh, try to aim it kind of appropriately. Okay, there's this guy, take him out. Head back. Should be one, yep, right there. Okay. Should be one more guy falling right now. There we go. Another one spawning right above. There it goes. Okay, and then hang out over here, one, and then there should be this, this is the last guy. Okay, so less mines this time, who knows, maybe it's actually going to do something. Again, hold your, vernier, hold your vernier and just go, and the bombs, if they're in the right spot, they should just launch you. Uh, that was up at an angle, so this is not going to do it. That one will do it. You, that's what you want to see. Uh, it just launches you straight forward, and as soon as you have that momentum, that's kind of like it's locked in, as that's the direction you're going to be moving. So you can just body straight through this laser. So... There we go. You take a heck of a lot of damage, and it is risky, but there's that health right there. So, to get through, you, you do have to land. You have to walk through it but uh, you will be able to get through it. And that saves you an entire cycle on the, uh, the gun boss weapon at the end. Um, so don't, don't despair so long as this first one doesn't knock you back. You still should be able to do it. And so long as there's one there, just land and walk through. And yeah, you are hurt as heck. Grab that, Vernier through, and then we can do the rest of the stage as normal. So regardless of whether you had to wait for the laser or if you're getting through um, with the bomb boost, the rest of the stage is the same. So, good. We're, we're at a, a reasonable uh, starting off point. Just, um, again, it's a good idea to reset your damage um, so long as you know that you're safe from the plasma ball. Like, it'll fire every uh, 10 seconds or so. Uh, so you can get out of your mech, uh, you'll restore the damage phase and jump right back in. Um, now we're in the tunnels. And from here, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of risk, but I'm going to try to show you all the ways that get around that. So you fall down, get the fast ascend, you put a thing there, and here we go. Just leave the mech right there. Um, a point of just quick movement here, you can do a pillow landing with, the, um, with your pilot as well. Engage it right towards the bottom, and you'll be able to jump off quickly. And this guy will not be able to hit you, as will this guy not be able to hit you. And uh, that's kind of what you need. You, you really want some health here. Um, then just get through. Uh, in that second phase, you do want to go up, because if the bazooka guy fires again, it'll hit you and you do like four or five damage. You don't want that. And then upsy-daisy. Uh, and here we're going to do a little bit of a manipulation. Um, how do I want to put this? So the best way to get through, he's looking at you right now, get over here, hide in the corner, let him come to you, and then just book it. You move pretty fast so long as you're just tapping while you're running, um, but do not like engage it so you get higher. And for the most part, his shots should miss you, and you'll be out of his aggro range so he's not going to come hunt you down. So get that, and that means he's not going to bother you while you get up. If you really feel like it, you can get that health, but usually it's not necessary. There's two of those. Eventually it'll disappear. Turn it off. 
and then you're just booking it up. You gotta be in this position, so so long as you moved quick enough, the little uh, gun turret wouldn't have spawned there and you can go right through. And then you're waiting for it to move back. And then one, two, jump. One, two, and then it's done. That's all you need to do on boss. Uh, so long as you got in a position. If you didn't get in a position, I'll show you some other stuff, but um, we'll, we'll treat that as <laughs> the, the plan for right now, because everything else is much, much longer. So get through. If you want, you can put a barrier to block the shots. Drop. Pillow. Go through. Get through that. If you shoot him, then... Um, it does work in your benefit uh, a little bit. I'm going to put a save state right here just to show off some alternatives. So again, you activate it and then you head over here and it should move him close enough so that he's just hanging out and he will not chase you. That is not always the case. And sometimes he might chase you, in which case, good luck. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's not a lot to do about it if you're doing this strategy. So again, just tiptoe and you'll get through. Uh, if you don't want to risk that, you can engage that piece and do your long way around. Grab this Havoc. And now you're safer, at least. But you still need to get out of the Havoc, get back over, and get your Nitro so you can be... so you can be the guy. Take this guy out. Shoot it a little bit. Usually two is enough, and you just wait until the uh, hitbox goes away. You want to do a clean jump. Okay, so this one's there, but I'm through. And then I just wait. Uh, wait for it to fire, and the recoil will put you into place. One, two, jump. One, two. If you don't jump, you will fall out, and you'll probably die. Um, there's some like weird damage stuff going on. I can show it in the hitbox viewer. Um, yeah, so all of that is just danger damage if you're within it, but the safe spot happens to not have any of that. So I'll do it one more time from the top, just uh, showing off everything. So again, you're starting, and you can see me already moving. So I'm moving away and, and very nearly engaged. And so long as this guy will treat me right. Okay. And then, and then you just get right through it, okay? Let yourself fall. Take that. Vernier through there. Keep on moving. Fall down. Play the shield so that you don't get beat up any more than you have to. Drop off the back. If you fire that guy and hit him, uh, he won't fire that second round, which is nice, but you can't always depend on that. Get that going, let it sit, and... Oof! Okay, that hurt, but still alive. Oops. So that's something that can happen. He's chasing me a little bit, um, but we're still okay. It's not going to be ideal, but just get him out of the way. Get up there. And we probably lost a cycle on the gun, but that doesn't matter too much for your competition purposes. Oops. Get rid of the power core. Okay. Get the quick jump. Get into position. Okay, so I missed that cycle. Uh, you do want to wait until you fall in. There we go. One, two, jump. One, two, and then we're good. And now we get to mission six, which is actually three missions. Uh, and they all have a different thing going on. Um, let me get rid of the HUD again. Uh, where did I put that one? Uh, let's go with eight. Yeah. So one, two. Uh, this is another one where you want to just hold forward and Vernier. Just start. You'll be above the treetops. And as soon as you start to see this one, you can kind of let yourself down a little bit. And you want to take out this cannon. Behind the cannon is a permanent rocket. Good, we like rockets. Take out that guy, get through the hole. 
Oops. Uh, it's a little bit tricky what happens here. Uh, there could be a... that guy will be a butthead. Oh gosh, is he ever a butthead. Um, if that guy is there or he's threatening you, it's a race situation. Take him out. Don't don't putz around. Like you can possibly survive, but it's not. You're not going for record attempts. Just just take him out for safety because a lot of bad things can happen from him. Um, he'll just annihilate you while you're getting out and trying to hit the switch. Um, but better yet is if we just don't aggro him. Unfortunately, the slope keeps you. Uh, Pushed back from that cannon a fair bit. There we go. Oops, get in there. Jump and hold right. Okay. And again, you want a Fernier to get through this elevator platform. Look up. These cannon doofuses are monstrous. Uh, if you let them, they will absolutely generate you. But you want to try to follow this path as possible. Um, there's occasionally you'll get some super boost. There we go. Oops, I got sniped. Perfect. This stage is really not too bad, but um, yeah, you want to be careful is, is the only thing I got. Uh, because those cannon guys, even though they're small and they don't look all that threatening, they will wreck every single thing that you want to do. Oops, get in there. Um, I'm just gonna... Okay, I'm just gonna start uh, keeping some closer save states so that we don't have to worry about party crashers. If you get into that, you can basically launch, get in him while it's falling down, so long as you position it right. Over here, fire up, and then start using your rockets. Fall down, rocket, rocket, go up, rocket, rocket. And if they hit you with a rocket, you get some crazy speed like this, which is nice, uh, but not required. And so long as you get to that door right there and fire a rocket, you're good. You can get out of the mech and not worry about anything. While you are in um, pilot mode, a lot of these guys just deactivate. They don't, they don't care. They will not do anything, and you are not really uh, at much danger. So that's kind of why, whether it's in a safe spot or you're just kind of on the fly, uh, you can get out of the mech and go over here, climb all the way up, and you can use this ramp to just get a, a boost. And then this is the one and only time we get to use ballistic. Um, ballistic's a pain in the butt. Uh, just to control and do anything, and if you've played, you realize this. Um, as you're getting into ballistic, hold A, and you'll start your charge up, let it go, fire through here, oop, and hopefully these mines are at least reasonable for us, yep. Climb up here. If you jump on this slope, you will get a crazy amount of uh, back spin, I suppose, uh, when you land, so don't do that. It's, it's not good. <laughs> um, when I get over here, take out this guy with a charge. So I'm pressing X right now. Uh, you can do this in any order, but as soon as you fire up like that, it will go all the way, open this up, you get into spider, you get out of spider. And that's all you need to do to set up for the next stage. You will continue with whatever mech you were most recently in. You do not have to exit the stage with that mech for it to activate. So. Just get in spider and get out. Um, you want to try to angle your, your boost so that you kind of land uh, either dirt. There's a way to kind of stick to the ceiling if you get it exactly right, but otherwise just try to land on this other guy. Um, you, we've already blown up the cannon that's in our way, so you can go through and trigger the, uh, continue to the next stage. But I'm gonna demonstrate once more just getting through. This is the ideal case. If you didn't get tracked down, just leave him on that door. He'll fall down and you can at least get a little bit of time save. Head up. Uh, this does require memorizing a little bit of the pathway. You kind of go up and down for a little bit. Fire rockets whenever you can. Remember, rockets are timed. Uh, they are not ammo based. And so long as you got a door, uh, a rocket out of the door there, you're good. Those will deactivate and you go through. Um, 
It is important if you are firing your rockets, do not fire a rocket and then get out of the mech. You will blow yourself up um, here. So uh, I'll just be up here and demonstrate. So the rocket, if you see it, it kind of starts from behind. And if you are moving, it kind of stays in that position. So it will wind up behind you. So all, if you're just going like this and you get out, you just blew yourself up. Sometimes it's not going to game over you. Other times it will soft lock you. Uh, and all that is bad. Um, other ways that you can soft lock, if your mech is getting blown up. Uh, yeah, let's go here. He's shooting that. And you get in while it's blowing up. It will soft lock you and you're stuck. So don't do that. But we're just going to go through the stage one more time. Deet, 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 deet. Use Vernier to get through the elevator. Look up, fire, and it should be perfect fit. Go down, take out two. Go back up and let rockets boost you if they do. They won't always do it, but when it is, it's fun. Uh, if you overshoot that guy, you need to get back down. Uh, and so long as you fire a rocket through that uh, that opening, it will open up the next area and you can just go and book it. Full charge, shoot through that. Just try and get over. If you fall down here, just jump a little bit, not very much. And then fire up once. It has to be the full charge. If it's not the full charge, um, it will not go the full distance. So then just go up through, get in spider, get out of spider. And uh, just to show you, the exit zone is on the lower part. If you go too high, you will miss it, so you do need to get down a little bit. Good job, Captain Dot. We made it. Cool. So now we will begin 6-2 in Spider, which is critical. Hey, Lavos. If I find any new softlocks? No, just talking about the ones we know. Um, so let's see. That was 8. Let's do 9 on the new one. And 1, 2. All right. Gosh. So... This is going to be the weirdest stage because you're going to do things that you don't do in any other stage. Um, but I will also show you ways that you don't have to. Um, this is the stage with zips, and zips are kind of fun, but also temperamental. So don't, if you don't feel comfortable doing them, I will show you the easy way. And you can still get a pretty massive time save, and you don't have to... Uh, try your hand at learning the specifics of how zips work. Spider is also difficult to control in its own its own right. Uh, if you are a spider and you cling to a ceiling, your controls will reverse. So you, <laughs> it's tricky to, to kind of get that in your head and really work with it. Um, I will try my best to demonstrate and, and talk through what's actually going on. But first things first, Let's, uh, let's just see how it starts out. So we are Spider. Hooray. You use one uh, head thrust at first, go to the ceiling, and then right now you can see I'm holding left, and I will move right because I'm on the ceiling. So whoop, 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 whoop. Get to the top here, jump up, and then we're going to take out this guy. Uh, you can do a mix of just firing straight as well as uh, using the, the head uh, head slam, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as soon as you're through that guy, you can get out, trigger that, and it takes a while. This spark is going to go all the way around, so we don't need to be in any rush. And again, once I'm on the ceiling, I actually need to hit left. And to aim down, I need to still press down. For whatever reason, I'm going to just show you, my hitbox is actually still just that lower square. So I can still walk freely underneath these um, that one row of upper stuff. Um, easy peasy. So just uh, get rid of the bottom ones and you'll be able to walk right through it. Jump, go over here, and there we go. We can just fall. Uh, there's no risk of having it taken over. 
uh, the enemy does not know how to take over spider spider bots, and there's only specific guys who can take over your mech anyways. So once you're down here, we get out, head over. We've got a Havoc here who's just going to make a very short run, go through, and we want to swing the blade, take him out. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. Go back through. And get in spider, and here's the fun part. I'm going to turn off all the hitboxes again, just so you can... Well, actually no, I'll leave them on to start. So that you understand what is actually going on with these clips. So, spider, we are going to go all the way to this corner, jump. Just don't press a button, I mean don't press a direction, just jump straight up. And now I'm on the ceiling. And what's going to happen is I'm going to press jump, which will disengage me from the ceiling, and right at the same time. And that should make me stick to that right wall immediately. There we go. And you can see my hitbox is actually a fair bit into the ceiling now. And from this point, we can do kind of a little wiggle, and it's going to give us a little bit of extra height each time. So, And what I'm doing is pressing jump and away, and then back towards the wall, jump and away, and then back towards the wall. And that, that gets me a little bit of height each time. So I'll demonstrate again. Oh, okay. So the way that I'm actually going through this is not... Uh, you hit away, then jump, and then back towards the wall. So jump. And you get a little bit of height, and you want to go until you kind of go right side up again. Uh, and at this point, there we go. You want to hold to the left and just press jump a few times, and eventually you're going to wind up in this position. Uh, and once you're at this position, you just press jump one more time. And there you go. You moved up one more, and you can just walk straight out. And that saves a little bit of time. It, this isn't the big zip. This is just one that in a world record setting, you're going to need to do, but the alternative, again, just to show uh, what it will look like if you're doing it at a good pace. There we go. You can get through as soon as that laser goes down, and then you just wander back. And if you do it right, you're able to get through in time. I was a little slow, so um, I do want to be clipped all the way through by the time the laser is done in order to make that cycle on the uh, boiler. There we go. So that, that is pretty consistent once you get the motions down. Um, it's just uh, you got to get the motions down. This one is only two blocks high, so you do need spider with the lower profile to be able to go through. Get through, climb on the ceiling, wander over here, and we're going to zip again uh, while this guy is kind of hitting us. And you got to get right up into the corner, disengage and go to the left wall, and then you do one wiggle and you move up into the wall. And that's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything else as soon as you get one foot up into the wall. And you can actually see um, in the second white block up, you can see a little bit of my foot. And that's what you want. And if you're not certain, just do it again. You can reset it. And there, you really get the foot in now. Uh, and all that you need to do at this point is just go into pilot mode and hold your vernier. Whee! And there we go. We skipped the boss. We're at the end of the stage. And you just get in the flyer and get the heck out. If you don't want to learn the zips, and I don't blame you, here's an alternative. So don't have to do any of that stuff, and you just spend some time going through kind of the rest of the natural stage here. Uh, I'm going to turn off those so we can see. You do have to kind of contend with enemies a bit more. but. Generally, they're not much of a threat. Wait over here. And at this point, uh, the lava, even though it looks dangerous... Oh, 
Well, that was dangerous. Uh, don't do that. Um, I almost got uh, crushed. So, Spider can get through that. Great. Um, what we're looking to do is just get further into the stage, and we're looking for a very specific part of... There we go. This thing. So, right here. Remember where I said Spider's hitbox, even if you're on the ceiling, is actually below? That's true here. And this is a two block gap with one ceiling on the tile. So I don't have to do anything other than get to the ceiling and move to that right area. And now I'm in a position to zip. So all I have to do is press the, uh, again, turn into pilot and look, there we go. That is slower than doing the zips earlier, but you still skip the boss. It takes zero effort. So long as you are spider, so long as you are spider is kind of a key component there. Uh, and easy to do. Um, I'll show again exactly where that is, um, but you do have to kind of wind your way through the rest of the stage naturally to make the most of it. So right there the laser opened. At this point we'd already be through if we did the other zip. Oops. This lava, even though it looks really dangerous, it's only dangerous if you get stuck in it. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, that's no good. Yeah, don't get stuck. Getting stuck is bad. Luckily, if, again, when you, uh, if you were to die and restart the stage, whatever mech you were last in will be the one that you, uh, restart the stage with. So if you were, if you, for whatever reason, died while you were in Havoc, uh, most recently, you would restart with Havoc and you'd have to figure something else out. Uh, I can give you one backup strat for that, um, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. For right now, though, oops. Get over here. So we're just gonna get through, jump through that. So the lava looks menacing, but it really doesn't do a whole lot of damage. You can not stay for very long uh, as any mech, but uh, spider specifically you can get through this, which is weird because what we're trying to get to is another spider. So for whatever reason you don't get to this stage with Spider, uh, you can get a freebie one over here. You just have to clear the pathway. Uh, not only that, but there's a shot four, which even though it's the most powerful shot in the game, uh, really doesn't show up many places and isn't that useful in this stage because we're not fighting anything. Um, so you can wander back here. And again, I'm pressing right to move left. It's confusing, you'll, you'll get used to it. Just wander on over. There's one more of these laser setups. Crawl over, and this particular area is what you're looking for. Just turn into pilot and hold your vernier. There you go. Easy peasy. So there shouldn't be a condition where you absolutely can never zip past the boss, so long as you have those uh, tricks in your bag. Uh, I'm going to do the entire stage start to finish uh, with zips real quick, just to show it again. And then we'll move on to the final piece of Super 16. Oops. So again, we, you want to start out, wait for yourself to fall. You, this is the one that you don't want to hit anything uh, in order to, to get through fairly quick. Jump to the ceiling, and every time you jump to the ceiling you invert. Through, open that, and then you can take your time. Uh, for the most part, you just kind of tap down every so often, and it'll be enough to hit the ones on the bottom. Angle down, and with any luck, we'll take care of these guys. Take care of them first, okay. Start firing, and ideally that guy will run away. Get back in. All right, now we're we're heading over. There we go. There we go. That is that should be enough to make the cycle. Oh yeah. Get through, jump to the ceiling again. Don't worry about this turret. It'll go away. And you wind up in this corner. 
you wait for your foot to just barely be off. So if you get that foot starting to go up, just tap back a couple times and then you'll be in position to try and set up the zip. There we go. It is temperamental. Oops. Okay, so that one I didn't go uh, far enough in. Get that foot visible. Go, go, Spooter. The only reason that you need to take this detour anyways is that that laser beam, there is no way through it. It does have a, a damage barrier around it, but it's just not set up in a way that you can uh, zip through it anyways. There we go. And that's a health, so just sets you up a little better. Oops. Go, go, go. All right. Easy peasy. That'll do it. Home free. Do a little Wiggletron there, just for position's sake. There's not really much reason to. And take the drotch straight up and go. And now we made it to 6-3. Very short. Um, has danger. Uh, depending on how risky you want to make your strategy. So, let's talk about it. Again, hold up uh, the entire time while waiting for the next stage transition because you are moving. And take some time also to familiarize yourself with Drotch. Um, you, you do have the eight-way shot. Uh, it's not very powerful, and you end up getting kind of blown all over the place just by virtue of, uh, well, you're floating. Uh, and the other thing is this dive. I... <sighs> how do I do this? Let's show you some very peculiar things about the dive. So right now, you can see I start with... Uh, damage phase six. Oh, no, damage phase seven. So 64 HP in this damage phase. Oh no, I'm taking damage. Okay, so watch, watch my health. It just instantly went back up. And for whatever reason, the re like, they programmed it so that every time you use the dive, you recover half of your missing health. Which also means, if you wanted to, you just spam dive, you will never die. It is not useful in this stage. Uh, it is weird and kind of banned in uh, competitive play, but you can use the heck out of this in stage eight, which you don't have to play for this competition. Um, but it's just good to know that you can do that because it will give you uh, a fair amount of safety if you feel like you're taking a lot of damage. You just tap the dive a couple times, your health will go right back up. All right, so there's a lot of very minor movement optimization here. You hope that you can just get through smoothly like that. Go in over the top, and first thing you wanna do, kind of go down and just dive right here. Oops. Okay. You wanna get close to that so that the turret doesn't come down first, and you just kind of make your way in, but then you wait right here right at the edge of this bridge and ideally what'll happen is that guy's just gonna run straight into that laser and get kaput 
and then you just continue on your merry way. These guys will also run away, kind of wind up up here, get out, and this is where the fun begins. So again, just to go over the basic movement, go through, go under, wait, let them explode, and there you go. Get out of Drotch, and... Oh! Uh, you don't want to leave it up there. I'm, I'm giving bad advice right now. If you just rush forward, this, this guy will hang out, and you do need to get rid of him beforehand. So, yeah, try to, try to manipulate him where possible, but not a big deal if you don't. Get up here and get out right at the top. So Drotch is basically hanging out right here. These guys don't fire at you if you're a pilot. <laughs> um, but the whole point is you're setting it up so that it will drop and you can immediately use it once you clear that switch. Hi, dude. So taking it from the top, go down, wait, forward. Again, the, the trajectory of these shots kind of random, but you make the best use you can. Here's where you have the decision point. Do you do something super risky, or do you just go with a safe strat that is definitely slower, but you will definitely live? Um, this, this is probably one of the places that I die the most in runs. So if you are not comfortable with doing this, do not try it. And similarly, if you're on good pace with your entire event, I would say also don't try it. Like this stage is not very long. And if you die, you just go right back to the beginning of it. But um, you will absolutely eat a minute, let's say, if you go for this and don't make it. So we're heading down the slope. Again, you can use the slope to increase your speed a little bit. Wait right here for just a moment and we're going to wait for this guy to start firing. So he's firing straight up at an angle. He's probably in a good position, but what you want to happen now is you're going to go over here and you want him to shoot. Well, he moved, so that's a problem. If you're right here, let him fire, move over, and you want one of these to go. And you do need to kind of bank on a couple different things happening. One, the trajectory has to be right so that when he shoots that through, you can just go through. And then when you land, immediately start your vernier, like right before you, you land. You get your pillow landing, you can accelerate past those guys. He will actually shoot the guys in front of you, so long as he's still in the right position and he didn't back up. If he backs up, they're probably going to kill you, unfortunately. Um, and then you just book it, for, book it through. See, he cleared that way for me. And everything else is easy peasy. Um, Take out these one by one. There will be a guy that spawns from here sometimes, but it shouldn't matter too much. As long as you go over here and press uh, the right thing. So like, how the heck do I want to put this? The hitboxes on it are a little wonky, uh, but you can pretty much always guarantee that you're getting in the drotch, uh, so long as just you line up right. So here's with hitboxes. Let that one go through. Clear this one first. Take out that guy. If you get to the switch before you kill that guy, you will interrupt yourself, your shooting, every time you start to activate the switch, and you'll both not activate the switch and not fire quick enough, and that guy's gonna get into the havoc and uh, give you a bad day. So take him out from like this square instead. Okay, and you see how the Havoc is slightly raised versus the Drotch? As long as you're on the ground, you should always get into the Drotch. Clear that, use the Skyfall to get through, and then it's just on your merry way. Whee! So that's 6-3, if you do it the risky way. If you don't want to do it the risky way, uh, the way that you're intended to go through is on this side and you can try to just bum rush it this way You will die uh, Do not recommend um, So either go through with that or you just take out uh, This entire process of going through opening that up Go around the long way
Whoop. And then you can freely just kind of get through and do everything. So much safer, definitely slower, but hey, if it's the difference between succeeding or not in this final mission of uh, the this game for the competition, like, yeah, go for it. And there you go. That is Metal Warriors up through stage 6-3. Uh, I've still got time tonight, so I think I'm going to continue the tutorial, but for the purposes of the Super 16, you're done. You, you just completed mission 6-3, all set, good to go. Uh, I'm going to do one more demonstration just of 6-3 uh, to drive it home. Didn't get quite the right position. Again, you want to leave the drotch kind of midway up. And we're going to go risky today. Let him shoot slightly in front, and he will clear the way for you. Take that out, take out this guy from afar. All done. Easy peasy, right? So, uh, I guess before I do any more, uh, does anybody have any questions about any of the stages that we've gone through? Um, I went through basics at the beginning, just what to expect, what to know, uh, what the general strategy is getting through a lot of these stages. Um, some of the gotchas and means of getting through. But uh, before I get into things that don't matter for the competition, uh, anybody want to bring up anything, anything giving them trouble? Otherwise, I tried to give some backup strategies for most of them too. Um, I guess while I'm waiting for that, I'll demonstrate one more time, 6-2 uh, without the zips. Or rather, without the, the hard zips. Again, you just got to get used to uh, swapping directions every time you jump to the ceiling. Imagine if it did indeed. Um, Honestly, like, this game is too punishing uh, for its own good. Um, just they thought it would be a good idea to give it limited continues, and it would be a much better experience overall if it had unlimited continues. So I made a hack, actually, earlier in the week for Unlimited Continues, so people can go and play the Unlimited Continues version. Um, just to get that experience, but as a casual playthrough, like, it is really tough to get through when not only, like, you're learning a stage, it is just generally tough to deal with a lot of enemies, um, and you're trying to come up with good strategies go. Oh, I just said I wasn't going to do zips, and then I did zips. It is a Disney game now, in fact. Good old LucasArts. Uh, I mean, I guess Konami might have some uh, rights to it, but it's still like a LucasArts game, just published by Konami. I don't know how a lot of that legal piece works, and I don't know if anybody can keep up with who owns the IP right now, but uh, alas, it is what it is. Yeah, I let my old habits get get ahead of me. And we did the full zips. We're we're doing no no difficult zips this playthrough for sure. 
You don't need to worry about that guy so long as he's focusing on you. Um, boop. Like, he's not going to run in and take over your mech. So long as you parked it far enough over. And the mech will actually block his shots for a while. Don't be afraid to uh, use the head to take out that dude. Long-awaited Steekwold <laughs> Stone Soldiers. Oh, man. Uh, it's just as long as it's not Stone Protectors. So I'm just going to walk off and jump. Oops. You can just jump right into this slot, and this is a full health, so easy peasy. Let that guy run away. Beep, 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 beep. Being all spooderish. Once we're through here... Just let yourself go, and here we are. Position, get out, hold the vernier, and voila. Easy peasy. Stone Protectors wasn't bad, per se. It's just a really long, bland beat-em-up. Takes a long time. But, uh, all right. So I think we've covered everything we need to for Super 16. I'm going to just continue. I'm in, the, I'm in the mode right now. Like an RPG, yep. It, it just lets you know how much you have left. All right. Hydration complete. Um, where are we? We're right here. I'll just continue on. There we go. Yeah, that guy is such a pain. I call him the gatekeeper. Uh, this is this is the gatekeeper split in my splits because if he's not having it, then neither are you. Okay, we are beginning stage seven. Stage seven is two parts. Um, this is another opportunity for if you get lucky and you get rockets, you can go faster. If you don't get rockets, too bad. You just go anyways. Uh, just not as fast and kind of a trickier route. Um, there's a lot of buildings in this stage and a lot of them are con combustible. Uh, they, they will collapse uh, if you step on the right spots. So let's just take a look. Uh, I'm going to leave hitboxes on for this uh, just so you can see where the triggers are because they're kind of obtuse and actually if the trigger spots you cannot destroy on your own so if you're trying to shoot through them you won't be able to. Um, anywho, let's do, uh, let's make that spot three and here we go. You start out in another kind of bouncing vernier to move yourself forward. And your whole goal, get into this. Okay, that's that. You got three shot. That one is always three shot. Okay. It gave me double gravity. Hooray. It's not worth anything. Um, well, I'll just give it one more go. If I get rockets this time, great. If not, I'll just show you the way that's without rockets. Uh, that three shot, you want to keep, so use a little bit of it. Even though that's a two and it'd be normally fine, keep the three. Three has a special property of it will just go. Like, you're taking out all of these uh, blocks just by yourself with one shot. Two does not do that. Those blue marks, if you touch them, that triggers a collapse. So, important to know. Okay, even if it's a one, I overwrite it with getting the three immediately. And rockets. So rockets, we just head down here. And our entire point is we're going to get in here and trigger a collapse, blow this up, and then just basically clear the way, because it will take us all the way through. And we're going to blow that one up to hopefully get a better angle on it. But notice that I wasn't really firing during that time. I'm trying to preserve my shot ammo um, to get to this area. You cut through, 
Give it a little ways forward, get through again, and then there you go. That's the end of that stage. Those rockets are totally random. The good news is that you have two chances at it. Both of the little carrier vehicles that go by have a chance to be rockets or anything else. Um, you just don't want to overwrite your three shot if you can help it. So that one's a speed booster. I got speed booster, so if this one happens to be rockets, okay, nope. Uh, after that, you just kind of move forward in the upper route instead. And you use your your shot sparingly, so you're not firing more than you need to. You just got to clear away a couple things. And you kind of want to get over to the right side, because a couple of those areas will just uh, kind of keep you moving forward. Um, like, you won't be able to fire through them. Um, and instead, oops, you want to go the upper route here, too. Just whoop cut through and then at this point we've synced up uh, the rockets path and the non rockets path it all just kind of works out the same uh, you'll probably have less ammo if you didn't have rockets and it will be slower but it's just a benefit uh, if you have that you can take the faster route getting that particular spot is kind of annoying um, I'll demonstrate one more time health okay uh, two, do not want it. I want to keep my, my three for as much as possible, so we're going to go the, the slow route again. Just kind of carve your way through. This is not so great. Ugh, rockets, please. Okay. And then fire straight down and let the collapse take you the rest of the way. Take out this guy, and we're going to go up. Blast through those, get down, blast through these, kind of take the middle, and yeah, then we're, we're synced up. Uh, I, at the very bottom there, so I made a diagonal cavern, uh, chasm, and then towards the end of it, you fire up, you fire a few shots, they will stop at the edge of a screen, and you kind of want it to be roughly where this, uh, this area in the middle is. Um, so that you don't have to do any guesswork on hovering to get the right positioning. Um, I'm going to keep going until I can find rockets to just demonstrate that, that one again, because it is easier, faster, all the rest of that, if you happen to be lucky. Uh, speed booster. You need to use speed booster if it's something else. Nope. Okay. It's a one, doesn't matter because we immediately get the three afterwards. That one's a health. Just hold forward in this place. You don't need to vernier like hardly at all. Okay, so that is rockets. Oops. <laughs> so that was a goof. Without the hitboxes, yeah. You get used to it. So you let this carry through, and you're looking for any one of these collapse zones. There we go. Wow, did I... Oh, yeah, you want to save rockets. Uh, you don't want to just kind of use them right away or else they will run out too early, because you barely have enough time for them as it is. Oh, that was a two. Grenadier. I am getting different stuff because I can't consistently hit, like, the right amount of... Um... Okay, so I did get rockets on that first one. And, oh gosh, so that one is shot. So immediately, since I have rockets already, I can just go to the bottom route. And again, we're, we're keeping it um, keeping it easy and looking for one of these zones, clap zones. There we go. And now you fire your rockets and you want them to line up with the ceiling and just keep firing. Uh, there's a collapse right here and then you fire right there. And so long as that guy's not hitting you, you should have an easy way to just get through 
that spot. Carve your way through, and yeah, then we're back to the normal spot. Oops. Ugh. Yeah, not managing your vernier correctly can wind up with some unfortunate consequences. But there you go. That's that's the end of uh, seven one. Um, heading into seven two, you hold your vernier the entire time. Boop -be -de -boop. Get through this. We're gonna wait until we see some buildings. So at the end of that building, we're just gonna tone go down. Okay. And now we're gonna use our old buddy, the pause trick. Boop, boop. Cut it through, and then we can get into the secret hidden spot and just blow it the heck up. And that actually is a fair bit faster than anything else you can do, but this is where it gets tricky. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I want to make sure he's good and dead. And then this part, very dangerous. If you are flying when that thing presses up into the air. There we go. That one's dead. You could go for the... Uh, the weak spot in the middle on that guy too, it's just not really much faster and it's still dangerous because his other body parts will press you up into the ceiling and you will die. So, <laughs> better to just uh, blow him up good. So after the building, let yourself fall down. Get a couple hits in. One, two, to... Oops. Yep, there we go. And you can go take it out. You do have to hit that very small screw right in the middle. Go up there. You can fall through kind of like an invisible spot, so you don't have to get good positioning. Two, three, four, five. Oops. I took damage on the first worm, so that one wasn't going to work. I couldn't tank it well enough. And you do, okay, right there, and you just wait for the damage phase to go out, and that's enough. And then you blow it up. Get up here. Get high enough just to avoid the shot. Pillow landing. There we go. And the seventh hit should do it. Another pillow landing. Tap, tap to get through. See how damaged I am? It is extremely dangerous. Oops. Yeah, you just don't want to risk it on these guys, because they they will blow you the heck up. That's the strategy I use, though, um, and you should be able to get through pretty reasonably just following that. There are some slightly faster ways to take out the worms. I don't remember them exactly right now. It's a mix of using the pause buffering and everything else, but... Yeah, it is very dangerous trying to get over that worm. So only tap once you land. Uh, if you are flying and it presses you into the ceiling or missiles blow you up or whatever, like, you're just dead. The end. And you don't want to go through the rest of a good run, try to gun it across the worm, and then end up just getting smushed into the ceiling. Not a good time. All right. Um, two. Two. Stage eight. Stage eight is, is tough for a few reasons, but just so long as you know what you're doing, you immediately get out. So you can hold select during the sequence and you'll start outside. But take out that guy. And actually, we're gonna hang out right here. Five, because that guy does a great job of taking out that cannon for us more efficiently than we can. You do have to grab that that key. If you do not, you cannot complete the mission. But since uh, that is free, we can just continue on up. And then the rest of this, it, 
the rest of this entire stage is about trying to avoid getting dumped on by the ceiling dumpers. That's just what I call them, but they drop. Um, remember that there's damage that can activate per frame. They drop explosives basically that activate per frame and you can go from full to almost nothing like instantly. Um, and there's a few of those, so be aware of them and they are dangerous. Uh, but otherwise, just try and clear your path. Like, you see these mines? They can move you up. And remember our little trick here? Just, you are trying to absorb as much damage as you're going through. Unfortunately, I took a ton there from that ceiling dumper. So my... Gosh. Yeah, I am not in a good way. Uh, if you absolutely need to, there is a health right... that one. Uh, but typically you would not get that. Okay, you're trying to avoid mines where possible. Uh, sometimes they can give you a good boost, other times it's just not dependable and you take too much damage even trying. Uh, there's one more ceiling dumper up here, just be aware and ready to take him out. Okay, hang out right here, shoot the upper area because this guy will shoot through the lower one for you. Oh. Didn't want to do that. I actually wanted to fly through, kill this guy. Ceiling dumper took me out real good. So, yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. And just knowing that you're going into bombs, just keep doing... Oh, gosh, ceiling dumper got me again. Uh, just keep doing the skyfall to get your damage safety. Uh, I am flashing, so not worth it. The sparking means that you are at least damage uh, you're in one of your last two uh, phases, so you don't want to chance it if you don't have to. Take out this ceiling dumper. They have just enough health to be extra dangerous too. Okay, once that's good, you go down a little bit, take him out. Get back in. Go over. And there is a boss. This is another instance in the game where if you move the text box too quickly, you can soft lock. So again, just let the text play out, give it one, one moment, and then advance it. Now, let them go. Let's get Skyfall down here. Oop. And at that point, we can leave it be. Oops. I got trapped on, on an invisible hitbox, um, but that, that would have won the, the stage. There's a lot of just minor things that <laughs> happen to work in your favor here. And I will demonstrate each of them should I get the opportunity. So we're going to skip the health this time around. So that one launched me pretty good. Again, every time you hit the, uh, the dive attack, you will recover half of your missing health in whatever damage phase you're in. Huzzah. So just rapid fire it enough and you you will live forever. Okay, ceiling dumper, get out. Go, go, go. I like to put it under here just so that there's no risk of the ceiling dumper coming along and wrecking you good. So go up, give this a moment. Now. Those grenades, very dangerous. Just go all the way. There you go. The stage completion line is ever so slightly in front of this gate, so you don't need to do anything about it. Just book it. Get to that end. As pilot, mission complete. Yeah, we escaped. Everything's golden. So that's that stage. Uh, I'm going to start from the top of it just to remind you again of, of how the opening goes. Before you even start, you can just hold select and hold left and you'll get out of the mech. Poor Nitro. Hardly knew ye. Fire that guy. Uh, he's going to shoot me. Yep, sure is. Uh, that is very dangerous if that guy shoots you because this guy down here can also shoot you and ruin your day. If you want, like, you can take some extra time to, to clear them out, but it's typically not worth it. 
he pretty much will always shoot you right there. Two, three, four, five, and then one more as we're going up. Get down, get down. Okay. Got the key. Now we're booking it. Just don't try not to overshoot. Precise control is much harder than it seems uh, with this, but just keep it up and it will support you. And again, don't be afraid to just mash on dive attack while you're dealing with bombs. They, it's the main main way that you can make sure that you're you're good to recover. Uh, it's also one of the only ways that if you get a helpful boost, uh, that you'll fit through these narrow gaps because the dive attack does have a slightly narrower hitbox, so you can go through those two wide gaps instead of anything else. Okay. Shoot the upper area. Go, go, go. Okay. Get to the top. Hold B. Let it go. Now go. Okay. Open this one and then just book it. And this guy should leave you alone. There we go. Cha-ching! So, we are going into the final stage and... There are a couple different significant things that can happen here that are really beneficial. Not 9-1. 9-1 is kind of boring, um, with the with one exception. And then 9-2 is when things can kind of get real. So I'll demonstrate 9-1. Um, just show the path and the hopefully the manipulation that'll get keep you alive. Uh, to start out, don't maneuver actually, hold down, uh, and you should be able to start kind of falling. Oh, I had it paused, yep. Yeah, just slightly forward, and then you can go through, and you really hope that you don't get juggled by these mines, because those are the only things that'll slow you up. Get a pillow. There we go. And so long as you do one, like while you're on that uh, beam, you're taking a damage constantly, but it will slow your animation for the beam saber. So you only need to throw it out once. And I usually use the forward one just because it lasts the longest in front of you. Uh, and it will take out that entire cannon. Uh, get out of the ship as soon as possible afterwards. And we're going to go up, get in this. And this is where things get a little interesting. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly where to stop. So, okay. It's like right after this, you wanna just wait and that guy will rush forward and you should be clear. Yeah. So here's what happens sometimes if you just book it. This guy will hopefully rush forward and miss most of you but sometimes he'll come back to, into this area and if he's in this spot you're you're basically done um there's very few ways to survive that um let's see if i can manipulate it to happen yep so from here it's like no chance so you want to try and manipulate him to come forward and usually it's like right here you just let him come right at you so it needs to be a little bit more forward than that. Uh, it's only for a moment. Just drop down, let yourself sit. And he'll either come up most of the way, or you can convince him to go all the way if you're really feeling generous. Uh, this guy can also hit you th by firing through the the way, which is unfortunate. But the rest of the time, you're just trying to book it through. Um, there's some ideal circumstances that happen here. You want to get over to the left and fire just enough. This guy fell down. Uh, not ideal, but now he can kind of help me. 
Um, you, we just want to get over here. And unfortunately, there we go. Uh, if you have bridge left, you can just use the bridge to help you get up. But the entire point is just move on forward. Keep on trucking. So, showcasing again. Yep, so that guy sniped me good. <laughs> wow, all right. So this is this is risky right now just because I did get hit one time earlier. And I don't remember the exact position that I would wait to manipulate. Maybe it's just I go further forward even. Like you want him to try and use his melee. Because then he's otherwise occupied. And then you just book it. Okay, so... Let's explore some options here. You immediately start firing up. If this guy's hitting you, you will get pushed down. And he already got rid of all of your, your bridge. So if there was a spot right here, you could just stand on this ledge, fire up, and uh, jump up to get, get through. Instead, you can just go here and get rid of ceiling dumper. And, uh, well, you could have tried to make your way across bridge. Yep, so you sneak in, and you can get in underneath. And then if you time it right, you can do that jump, but it's difficult. But this is, like, you will get through this, it's just a matter of how cleanly. And, yeah, there's some ideal things that you can go for. Uh, it's just not, like, realistic to happen all the time. So usually you will miss that jump, but you can try it anyways. It's not, not a problem. Okay. 9-2. This is the longest stage in the game for a few reasons. Most of it is just you're waiting for cycles. Um, it is also very difficult for that reason. When you start off, use the X, the, uh, the roller blades, uh, and just keep holding forward. You'll wind up in the position I did, but you'll be able to catch this first cycle. Go over, take out that dude. Those dudes. It's okay if, like, you get knocked around here. You're stuck on a different cycle anyways. This one is always health. And over here is the good stuff. That one is fixed. That one should always be rockets. Um, I'm gonna put a save state here. Yeah. And we're going to overwrite... Which one is this? This is eight? Seven. This one must be eight. And nine. Uh, the pilot has his own special pickups for health, uh, but every time you re-enter the mech, you gain health back, so you, you just top off every time. Okay, so I'm going to eat up three with this one. Yeah, so... We'll just have to get back to stage three if we want to have states there. So, this one's always rockets. You can start off getting that uh, if you want, but this one right here is random. This one is always seek, which is bad. Don't get seek, but you want to check the random one for not grenades. Not grenades, I says. Is it just already already set to grenades? It shouldn't be. Okay, there, it's gravity. What we're looking for is either speed booster or gravity. And this is the only place in the game where you want one of those two things. Here we go, gravity. So this is the easy mode. You just wait for this thing to start going, and you flip. Whee! 
done. And we skipped an entire phase. Uh, and it saves a ton of time, like 20 seconds, if you get gravity. You can also do the same thing with speed. It is harder, but you, you accomplish the same effect. Otherwise, what happens is you just kind of climb normally. And you can use rockets. Um, it doesn't affect anything here, but you just do your climb. Doesn't matter because you're blocked off at the top. And if you're nervous about... Oops. Yep, you will get up here. Like, you don't have to be worried too much about which, uh, which direction you're going to go. This is what you need to be concerned about, is getting this timing so you don't get squished. And that's it. That's the normal way. Most of the time, that's the way you're going to end up doing. If you want world record, sorry, you got to get, you got to get gravity or you got to get um, speed booster. Um, let's see if I can't manipulate a speed booster here. Like, I have to be out of range to... It's another rockets. Who wants rockets? <laughs> seeker and seeker. Perfect. Speed booster is one of the rarest pickups anyways, um, but I still want to at least demonstrate what happens. And so just to go over gravity again, you just kind of wind up over here and you should have been able to basically just take yourself all the way up. I just activated it late. There we go. Speed booster. Um, I guess we'll put it at two. So how this works. Activate speed booster. You get super jumps. Uh, I don't remember the exact plan, though. It's like you all you need to do is activate it and then just jump in the right way. Yeah. There you go. So, you can do it. Just sucks. It's much harder than uh, the other one. There we go. And you risk getting blowed up pretty good. Uh, the thing is, you can actually wait this out, too. So with Speed Booster, you have the option of, if you make it, like, all the way up here, you just wait, and you're still going to be on the right time. There you go. So, yeah, you don't have to try to bum rush past, but... Yeah. Those are all the different ways to get through. The rest of the stage does not matter what you do with them. Get out at the bottom. Okay, so we want this. This is gravity. And we're gonna use it to try and just get the heck out. We really want to keep gravity for as long as possible. Use lots of uh, chain to clear your way. So we are going Havoc mode. 
and if I did that faster, I wouldn't. This wouldn't be obstructing me. So let's uh, let's take a look at what faster looks like. Well, this is also not faster, sadly. So long as gravity lasts all the way up to here, we're good. We do need that, that's uh, shot three. And okay, so this was again slow. If you get through that faster, this uh, this entire block will be not there, and you can just kind of wing it. We're going to start all the way in the back, and actually I'm going to do one more time, just chilling off. You need to shoot that on the way up, get that. And don't risk shooting that thing if you don't have to, because if you get Seeker, like, it's just bad news. Um, seeker or Bounce. Take out these guys as best you can. Again, we want to try to conserve ammo where we can. There we go. Just made it. Any further, any slower, and I would have been crushed there. So that that is a concern. If you're not sure that you're going to make it, just hang back, wait the cycle. Um, all right. The hardest part of all of this is right here. Rush forward from the corner, and as soon as that pause happens, start holding up, forward, and hit your chain. And if you're lucky, as soon as this dialogue goes away, you can pause and basically do some major damage. So let's turn on hitboxes for the hell of it. Okay, so that didn't do it. There we go. There we go. Just down. So this this boss is incredibly weird, and uh, I will explain some pieces of why. So So I actually overlapped multiple hitboxes there, so his, his health just evaporated. Um, so assuming we're starting from here, uh, let's, let's do that. There's... if you keep attacking this, it does do damage to him. Like, it shares a health box with him, which is really silly. But we're, we're not about that life right now. So all that we're gonna do is hang out over here, let him turn around, and he's gonna spawn his dudes. Or rather, here. <laughs> there are all sorts of weird ways to manipulate him. Just let him turn around and then activate. He's gonna spawn his guys. As soon as you see him moving, you wanna use your chain, get him to go in. He'll turn around again. And then, as soon as he's doing that again, one more. And there should be one more phase. Oh, I ran out just as uh, just as that was going. But you can stand here, and he'll actually lift you a fair bit. Kind of anticipate when he's going to come in. Okay, all done. Turn around. Hit him again. Okay, one more time.
And right after that third one, you actually get underneath him, if I'm remembering these strategies correctly. Oh, that felt like a good one. I'm remembering these strats a little bit on the fly, so... As soon as he turns around, you can hit him again. And turn, yeah. So long as all of his little bits are out, as soon as he turns around, he should be hittable again. If you destroy any of those, he'll take his time to spawn them, so don't worry about it for right now. Uh, however... We want to be in position underneath him, because this confuses the heck out of him. And we're just going to jump and use our shot three to just blow him up. Wait a moment. His bits became active as soon as you hit one of them. Okay, there. He's dying, he's dying. And I despawn the boss. Game over. This is a risk you take uh, with this sort of strategy unless you start destroying bits, which I should have done in uh, the step before um, that final kill because he takes on one of their prior positions, which is actually in a wall. So if we wait, we can see him. He's, he's walking along right above the stadium kind of endlessly until uh, he maxes out his his uh, exposition. So let's uh, let's take it from the top. Yeah, if you jump, he's he gets very confused. Instead, let him spawn the stuff. There we go. Take him out. One more. Oops, cut that one off early. This is much easier with the uh, hitboxes, obviously. If you don't have them, you just time it out. It's usually about two seconds you need to wait. So long as you're staying underneath him, it's all good. Okay, one more phase. Oh, he got away. Well, he, he even if he gets away, his hitbox still hangs out quite a, in some reasonable spots. Okay, there's Venkaramon. So long as you are in front of him, like, this is a cakewalk. And since he got away uh, in that moment, uh, that lets you pretty much ensure that he's not going to um, take on one of the positions of his bits. And you just make sure he spawns that way. After that, take it all through and you are home free. And there you go. Metal Warrior speedrun. There, this takes a lot of practice just to make sure you've got your timing right, that uh, you're able to take him out in the way that matters. Just have to make sure the hitbox is overlapping. If you're not sure, it is okay to... Look, you can even get a fourth cycle. I usually don't like to get a fourth cycle. One, two, it's just risky and you don't need it. Okay. So there, he's dead, he's coming in. Success. 
I killed, I guess, the right bit so he didn't spawn into the ceiling. Take your escape. I'm gonna do it once more, just without the hitboxes. You just do a little bit of sliding around. There is some, um, some pillow landing things that you're doing kind of all throughout that, but it's not hard, and if you miss it, it doesn't matter either. So there we go. Let's do it for reals, and that'll cap off this tutorial. Uh, yeah. There we go, perfect timing, and boop. And I'm just gonna wait. Two, one thousand, three, one thousand, boop. I guess I missed the timing. Just in case. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, go. And then it's all just taking them out. It should be like two jumps will take out a phase. This is the second to last phase. Oh, that's what it is, is he's actually, his hitbox is still right here, and so long as he's lower, you can, uh, you can take him out safely. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, and then you escape. So that's what it looks like without hitboxes. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just go back to the, uh, the one safe state, though, to showcase the fact that, uh, I remembered what the strategy is. Uh, just to make sure that he doesn't spawn in the middle of freaking nowhere. Okay, so starting from here, like, yep, we take it out. Wait as long as you can to use the gravity. Okay. One phase. Two phase. Three phase. And just as long as you're under him, then everything should be fine. Okay, there's one more phase. We haven't killed any bits, so everything's still good. One more time. Jump up once, fire, let go, and then move forward. He'll move out of space, but his hitbox is still right there. So that's how you kind of guarantee that he's not going to spawn up into the ceiling. It's just you have to release him from that lock, and everything should be fine. That bomber, that uh, grenade guy right above you, uh, yeah, he can sometimes throw a very poorly <laughs> placed grenade that'll hit you, but... So long as you don't really get hit anywhere else, it, it shouldn't matter. And so long as you're in front of Venkar Amon, like, escaping is simple enough. So there we go! Metal Warriors! Complete speedrun tutorial. Heck yeah. I guess this has been a long time coming, uh, and I hope it helps people. Uh, granted, I didn't throw out the strats for Stage 4 perfectly, um, but I at least gave some of the backup pieces, like just guard the right cannon and you should be fine. Um, but uh, I have a blast with this run, and I hope other people eventually will too. Uh, it's also just wicked difficult and frustrating because of the various RNG and AI manipulation elements. But that's that's part of what you get in speedrunning stuff. Mike Ebert and Dean Sharp. Heck yeah. I tried to contact Mike Ebert, I believe, at one point. He was still working at a games company way back when I was running this for SGDQ 14. And 
Uh, I was trying to get him for commentary. He responded at one point, but then just fell off. I wasn't able to keep up with him after that. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go back one more time. We're going to go from here, and we're going to look at hitboxes just so I can illustrate what the heck is going on with that final phase. Two, one thousand, three, one thousand, boom. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, boom. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, boom. And at that point, disengage, get underneath, start firing up. Okay. Let's flip around one more time. Okay, he's in his final phase. Jump up once. Uh, I got knocked down, so that's it. And then you move out of position. See, his hitbox is still up there, so you can still hit it. <laughs> um, and it is much, much safer than trying to engage him anywhere on the ground, because he can just uh, annihilate you. It's constant hitbox kind of around the areas where he's stomping, so yeah, don't, don't mess. Uh, I mentioned before, like if you see this, is a health pack actually. Did he just evaporate? He sure did! Wow, okay, that's new. You can kill Venkar Amon, apparently, by getting the health pack. We learned something today. Alright, and just like that, uh, it's time to end stream. <laughs> we'll, we'll cap it off with a new discovery, and it doesn't help speedrun, of course. Uh, it's just fun to know. The grenade guy missing is, is more common. Um, just, it has to do with how many sprites are still left. Like, how many of the uh, little bits uh, from the prior boss fight are still floating around. And if there's too many enemies, he won't spawn. And maybe that's what happened there, is just, like, there were too many sprites when I got the, the thing, so it overwrote Mr. Venkaramon. But there we go. All done. And I think that'll do it for me tonight as well. I'll just let credits roll, but the first two-thirds of this stream were all about supporting the Super 16 event. I think the website for that is like super16.org maybe? speedgaming.org slash super16. Yep. Um, oh, here I'll grab grab the linky uh, just so people can see the details. Uh, but Metal Warriors is one of the games. Where, oh where did my Twitch thing go? Here it is. Boop, boop. Yeah, uh, if you want to like watch the opening sequence, there's hitbox pieces that pop up all over the place. They don't really do anything because you're obviously not engaging with them, but it's just kind of like junk data that they're filling in. Um, they overwrite it later on, um, but it, there's all sorts of stuff like that um, that happens. Um, but yeah, there's Super 16. You can go check out the details, when it is, how many people are competing, all the rest of that jazz. Um, Metal Warriors is a tough game. It normally has limited continues. I made a hack earlier that gives unlimited continues, uh, and it was approved for use, so just people don't have to feel like they're really fighting, <laughs> fighting too much by also having a punishing game with limited continues. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I hope that when people really start to dig in and, and try to work this game up through the end of stage six, that uh, they'll enjoy it and it'll be one of the highlights for them. But for everybody else who wanted to, you know, pick up this game and run it themselves too, well, the rest of the tutorial Hopefully should help them. But uh, yeah, so I'll 